district uh, just want to welcome you back to another video I know I haven't done a video in a while because we've sort of been in a little bit of a law uh, we got our year kicked off we were very successful as you know um, in getting our schools open and I know many of you were happy with that we were very happy with the success of that and um, we did get into the holiday season and the holiday season we shut down intentionally um, because we wanted to mitigate what we heard was coming and what was supposedly coming was a spike um, in the numbers. So um, I know some folks weren't happy with that. We were hoping we were making the right decision, but again, everything we do, the first priority always has to be safety. We, they were predicting the spike over the holiday season. So um, I did request and ask the board for their support um, to close go to full remote learning just over the holidays. We did bring our special education students in um, during that time. Um, our most needy students that you know that really had probably the most difficulty um, learning from home. We were able to do that and we were quite successful. Um, the purpose of today is to give you an update. We had a board meeting last night. You may or may not have heard about this yet, but um, I know word travels very quickly, especially with social media, but I want you to hear it um, from me personally. Um, last night at the board meeting I gave a presentation and I gave an update of where we are in our present time. Uh, my recommendation right now is to reopen our schools K through 12 starting Monday, January 11th, and that is for all students. Um, with that being said, um, I'm sure folks are sitting, what are you doing? You're in a pandemic, you are in a substantial category, um, and I want to explain where, where our rationale is behind this. <clears throat> We believe schools are essential businesses. Uh, we have yet to been declared that by the state government, um, but we believe schools are essential. Why do I believe schools are essential? Because I get the emails every day. I get to uh, see that some of the heartbreaking stories of, of how students are struggling, trying to learn from home, um, not only academically, but social, socially and emotionally. Um, I believe we're essential businesses. I, I think um, we should be open. Um, education is probably one of the most critical things in this world, and I'm obviously saying that as an educator, uh, former teacher, obviously, but uh, I believe in that. We believe in education, and this is our business. Um, do we want to do this carelessly? No. So with that being said, we agreed that we would shut down over the holidays that we were predicting a spike. Um, for those that were disappointed in that, <clears throat> I can tell you it was probably the best decision we could have made because we really saw a spike and it really wasn't in um, student or staff cases, but we saw a large number of folks requiring quarantines um, because of what was happening in the community. Um, and administratively, we discussed, wow, you know, good thing we did shut down and sort of anticipated this because I'm not sure most of our buildings could have remained open anyway. Um, so at least there was some consistency through the holiday period. Um, so here we are, it is January 6th, it's, it's Wednesday. Um, where are we in real time? We promised we would come back, take a look, about, look at our data and make decisions. We looked at our data, um, and just to give you a real quick overview, um, we are allowed to open when we're in substantial, but the state is requiring two things of us, that if we open, we must A, comply with the face mask and face shield order, which we fully intend to do. Um, so we, that's something we signed and agreed to the state that if we open in substantial and we don't stay remote, we would follow that. Um, the second thing that we agreed to do, um, and we have to do, and this is probably the most important part of the video, one of the things we, we have to do, not only is we have to comply with the face order if, if we open, uh, face mask order, we have to abide by um, the state's recommendations for what happens when we have positive cases. Um, so today there's going to be an announcement going out and with that there's going to be a chart and you're going to see each building on it and you're going to see two tiers. You're going to see what's going to require us to close a school for three days and then you're going to see what's going to require a school to close for five days. Um, that is different um, with each school and the reason is because the state has us identified as small, medium, and large schools. Um, all of our schools other than the high school and centennial are considered medium schools. So we have to follow that guidance. Um, when do we close three days for the first tier? When do we close five? Centennial is considered a small school because they're under 500 students. With Centennial, their numbers are a little different to close three days. 
and the closed five days. You'll see those numbers are a little smaller. When we get to the high school, because they're considered a large school, what constitutes a three-day closure? Obviously, is a little greater in number, and what constitutes a five-day closure is a little greater in number. So without going through all that, um, um, I actually cut and edited, and we're on a second video. I tried to explain that it's way too much to try to, to, to put in a video, and it's probably very confusing. So you'll see a chart that will come out that will show you that if we open and we have X number of cases, um, exactly how many school days we'll need to close. Um, so that will be that will be put forward today. Um, we had administrative meeting yesterday. We took a look at our numbers, past, present. Um, the state has what's called a 14-day rolling average, which means if we come back Monday, everyone starts at zero cases. So I sort everything in the past is a past. Once we open, we start at zero and it's a 14-day rolling period. The minute we have a first case, of, of a, the minute we have a first positive case, that building, their 14-day window starts, which will require us to monitor the number of cases within the next several days, up the next 14-day period. If we hit certain thresholds from, the, from when that first case, case hits um, up until that 14th day, if we hurt, hit certain thresholds, that's when we will have to require closure, um, either three days or five days. Um, so with that being said, you'll look at that chart, that's very important. Um, I know a lot of folks, it's a very polarizing subject. When we when we had schools open, you know, I was getting emails like things like, you know, you're gonna have blood on your hands and how dare you. Um, we get chastised that way. and. Equally so when we shut schools down is like, you know, people are like, you got to realize we need you, my child needs you. Um, it's a very polarizing subject. Um, so we know no decisions ever going to satisfy every person. But this is the important part of this. Our model was created specifically for this reason. If you are someone who believes and knows, we are, we know there's a pandemic, we know we're unsubstantial. We know we can open, but we know it is, it is a real thing. Um, if you are a parent who feels that the reopening of schools is not a good idea, it's not safe, um, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's actually very res much respected and understood. Um, I get it. Um, keep your child home, have them continue with LSI, and, and you won't have to worry about those safety issues. If you are someone and got one of many that I get, the child's are struggling, whether it be academically, socially, emotionally, um, send them in. You know, we're going to have the protocols in place um, that ensure their safety. And if, and if things aren't safe, we're going to be required to close. So um, what I'm asking be, the community is, since it's a very polarizing subject, um, please ju don't judge those who choose to keep their children home. And they have very good intentions and very good reasons. And that's a parental choice that we intentionally created. And for those who um, have kids at home and, and see people sending their kids, I ask that you respect their wishes also. Um, because it, 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 again, it's parental choice. Our model was created based on parental choice where we don't have to force anyone into an unsafe situation. Um, some people have asked about a hybrid model. Why wouldn't we do like an AB, uh, some type of rolling model? Um, taking a look at our numbers, uh, we feel actually by opening and using these 14 day windows, even if we may need to close here and there, um, our students will actually get more face time um, the probability of more face time, especially as you go in the, the younger grades, is much greater um, this way than it would be if we went to a hybrid model. And again, that's something that you know um, probably could be debated forever, but our model was basically created very simply. Um, send students in or keep them home where they could have live instruction. Um, so with that being said, uh, I don't want to speak too much because I know I'll lose you. Um, at last night's board meeting, again, I, I summarized the fact that I believe we're essential businesses. I wish we would be deemed that. Um, I think it's very important. Uh, we, we know that a lot of you need your children to be in school. So we know that. We're going to open up. We're going to go K-12 to um, on, in January, on January 11th. Um, this upcoming Monday, we're going to send out a communication here shortly that will have this chart that you can look at sort of explain these things in greater detail. And from there on out, we will be making decisions on a building by building basis um, based on that chart. It's gonna be based on number of cases. 
Uh, the last thing I'll end with is um, that chart is fine and dandy, but there's one other thing that really could throw a monkey wrench in our plans, and that would be number of staff quarantines. You know, we may have we may have situations where we have zero student cases or zero staff cases, but we may have four or five staff members, um, six, who have to be quarantined because they're living with someone who's positive. That's a reality. Um, that may constitute closure, um, but. We're hoping that worst part of this spike is behind us and we're starting to see a decline. Um, we do know that looking at the European models, schools that have remained open because they were deemed essential, um, schools are not super spreaders. Um, schools are actually very safe places, um, which leads me to the, remind everyone that if you really wanna help us keep schools open, um, please do your best to, to be socially responsible with your children at home and on weekends and the time that they're under your care. Certainly you're the parent, we can't tell you what to do, but you know, if they are in social situations, make sure they're safe and they're protected because um, most of the things that we're finding that are causing the positive cases are certainly outside of, of the realm of the school. Um, so we're gonna open K-12 starting Monday, January 11th. Um, we have those parameters we're gonna work under. Um, everyone needs to be prepared that at a moment's notice we could have a closure. It could be three days, it could be five. Um, if we have subsequent closures that's just too much or staffing issues, it, it, it may be an indefinite type of closure. But our numbers right now, again, it looks like our younger grade levels have the greatest potential to remain open. As you get up there in age and as kids get more social, you know, we'll see. Um, we'll see how things go. Um, and again, that we'll, we're going to work with you the best we can and um, open our schools. We feel it's important it's time to do that. And we thank you for your patience, not only when we opened in the fall, um, supporting those decisions. I appreciate those of you that supported our decisions when we closed down, anticipating that spike. And I appreciate the support once again for those that understand our need to, to reopen um, next Monday. Um, so look forward to keeping you abreast of, of where we are um, we are certainly in territory that we're not used to. This is new to all of us, it's stressful, um, but this is what we do. We educate, we're ready to do that starting Monday. Um, you may email me, you may contact me, you have any questions. Again, those of you who feel comfortable keeping your children home, continue to do that. Perfectly fine and certainly understood, um, especially when we're in substantial. Those that need us, you know, we are finally ready to, to reopen and accept your children back on Monday. Uh, most of all, stay safe, stay healthy. Please continue to support our schools. Please continue to support our decisions. Um, they are not easy. Um, very, very difficult times, but um, can't say enough about the support we have received and we, that I hope we continue to receive by all of you. So thank you, stay safe, and we'll be in touch soon.